Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be making my own organic cough, cold, and flu remedy. So let's get started. I'm really excited about this year's batch of cough, cold, and flu syrup because there's a few new additions to this that all came from my own garden. And so I'm going to be starting with my own black elderberries. I have a whole half cup of dried elderberries because they just got their first fruit this year. I didn't get a whole lot. I think the birds got a bunch of them as well, but I have enough to do this, which is great. And I still have a bunch from last year, so I'm doing good. I, I probably won't even get to this one this year with the, with what I have built up. And I'm also going to be adding my own homegrown echinacea, my own homegrown marshmallow leaves and flowers. These are really good for coughs. Um, and then those are the homegrown things. I'll also be using some organic ginger, some organic Ceylon cinnamon, and some organic ground cloves. So let's get to it. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is I was considering adding the Salal berries and leaves that we had collected recently. And you can find a video on this right up here. But because I'm not sure of the flavor yet, because I haven't tried these or anything, and I want to keep this tasting really good, I'm going to go ahead and wait and try making a smaller batch with this a different time. And we'll see how that turns out. But I've got a lot of really good stuff here that's excellent for coughs, colds, and flus. So let's get to this. Okay, so starting with four cups of my filtered rainwater, you want to make sure you're using good healthy water and avoiding your city tap water because even if it's unfluoridated, it still has chlorine in it and you really want to stay away from that. And stuff. besides that, chlorine could kill the good healthy properties in your raw honey. So you obviously aren't going to want that. So look for if you have a good well water, um, buy, or if you have to buy water, look at distilled water or spring water. The problem with those is they're usually still in plastic containers and you don't know how long they've been sitting there. But, you know, you just do the best you can. I know we're all trying here. And another thing I want to say about, and I'm going I'm to say this a few times, you'll hear it in a few videos, about your filtered water. Uh, we filter rainwater, not our city water, because we're using the Berkey ceramic filters. And they are great for filtering out lots of heavy metals and pathogens. If you're wanting to filter out your city tap water, you're still going to need to look at some special filters that will take out the fluoride and the chlorine. Now, I believe looking at the reading on the Berkey site, the black filters, the charcoal one, will take out some or most of the chlorine, but it won't take it all out as far as they know, um, and they won't take out the fluoride. You need to get their special fluoride filter if you're going to do that. For us, it's just cheaper and easier to buy the um, ceramic filters and then just use those with rainwater that we collect. So, because the rainwater is not going to have any fluoride or chlorine in it, so we're not concerned about that. Okay, so four cups of the water. Okay, I realized I needed a bigger pot. The other one was too small. So, anyway, pouring my four cups of filtered rainwater in there. And then I'm going to add in these elderberries. There's a half cup here. And you can use a little bit more if you want to, or especially if you're not going to be using all these ingredients. So I'm putting in about a quarter to a third cup of the marshmallow leaves and flowers. Put this back over here with the rest of my herbs for teas. Looks like I need to set another, set out another fruit fly, fruit fly trap. I can't say. I'm going to use about a quarter to a third cup of my dried echinacea leaves and flowers. And no, I don't. I haven't collected the root yet because my plants aren't quite old enough yet. Maybe next year I'll get some root. And then when I go on to my spices, I want to put in, I'm going to use the lid for this so it doesn't stick to my hands, about a tablespoon of cinnamon. Make sure, again, Ceylon cinnamon not your regular cinnamon. If it doesn't say Ceylon cinnamon, then it's cassia cinnamon. And you really should be switching that up and using it in your garden to repel pests rather than ingesting it. You want to look for organic Ceylon cinnamon. So about an another tablespoon of the ginger, or a 
tablespoon of the ginger, not another tablespoon of the ginger, but you could add more if you want. And then about a teaspoon of the ground cloves. Now cloves can be pretty strong, so you may want to use less. I like lots of cloves, so I always go for more when it comes to this kind of stuff. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do after I stir all this in here is I'm gonna go put this on my wood stove and I'm gonna let it get really hot, maybe even bring it to a boil, and I'm gonna cover it and then let it simmer for, you know, anywhere from a half an hour to an hour to let all these herbs and things really infuse well into my water. So, I'll be back when this is all ready for the next step. I'm done simmering my herbs and I've let this cool down to well below 100 degrees because for two reasons. One, I do not want to pour it through the nylon while it's hot. And also because I want to keep my honey raw and I'm going to be mixing that in with this once I strain out all these herbs and berries. So I'm just going to kind of squish out as much as I can. I want to keep all the good benefits in here. And you could actually, and what I probably should have done is went ahead and done like I do for making cheese or the grape juice and just put a cheesecloth over this and then strain it out by hand. But since I didn't do that, we'll just go ahead and finish that here. I'll, I'll probably do that later. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is take one cup of my raw honey and add that in. So you just want to keep stirring that honey in there until it's fully dissolved. I think it helps that the mixture is still at least a little bit warm, but it will, will eventually dissolve either way. All right, so I decided to go ahead and dump this into a couple layers of cheesecloth here, and I'll just finish straining that out so I can get more, more goodness out of there. Get as much as possible, since especially since that was all the elderberries I got off my bush this year, my bushes, my shrubs, whatever. I want to make the most out of them. Let's get all that out of there. And what I find is helpful, I did this when I was uh, making the grape juice, is I just kind of massage it like this and I find I can get more liquid out of it at a faster pace. Okay, that's probably pretty good right there. All right. And then I'll just take the pulp and I'll throw it out to the chickens. That'll be good for them, those berries and the, and the herbs. All right, looks like my honey is all melted in now. And so you can see I'm going to use a recycled avocado bottle and just pour that in there. And if you didn't see my video on save those bottles and why you want dark bottles, you can find that up there in the upper right hand corner and this should be just the right size to hold all this oh there's still a little bit of honey in there that's okay we'll get it all in there and then we can just put the lid on and shake it up after shaking the bottle really well i then took a taste test which was silly because i should have done it before i put it in the bottle and that was the reason why I left all the spices out because I wanted to see how it tasted first before I put these away because I had a feeling I was going to want more. I've never written down my recipe when I do this kind of stuff so I never can remember how much I add. Um, but now that I've made this video, I'll know so I can always refer back to it and eventually remember to actually write it down. So I went ahead and put in another tablespoon of each the cinnamon, the ginger, and another teaspoon, maybe a little bit more than that, of the cloves, because I like it strong. It could still be stronger yet. And I would say when it comes to spices, make it as strong as you can handle. I would say even put cayenne pepper in this, which I was tempted to do. But since I don't know who all is gonna be needing to take this, again, when it comes to stuff like that, I try to keep it from being too spicy. But um, anyway, this stuff is all just really good and what you can do is don't just wait until you're sick take this if, if, if colds and flus are going around start taking this on a daily basis and i would say take at least that much was which is about a tablespoon a day 
And then if you do get sick or you feel something coming on, take a whole shot glass, an ounce to two ounces a day. And uh, until you're feeling better, maybe I would say even take it, if you're real sick, take it a couple times a day. But at least once a day to prevent getting sick and doing this kind of stuff for us has really helped us from catching any of the nasties that are going around. It's very rare that we ever get sick. And even if we do start to feel something coming on, we just take a little bit of this, a little bit of colloidal silver, and we're better. No, no problem. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.